Hi, everybody. Oh, I love being part of something big. Love you guys, and it's so wonderful to, to just be a, a team doing work that matters. And of course, we want to do work uh, and succeed at it. And I would like to just share some thoughts that uh, success really is predictable, and it's based on, on certain things. And we really do live in a predictable world of cause and effect. And, and success really is a lot like a recipe, whether you're making cookies or being successful and you can you identify uh, the strategies or the ingredients and uh, learn them, repeat them, and you can get predictable results. So I, I'd like to kind of just share a, a thought that I would maybe say everything I learned to be successful on Nikan, I learned from selling light bulbs many years ago. And light bulbs, how did I get into that? Well, I was in the Navy and that was to become uh, an electrical engineer originally, but uh, the Navy uh, soon cured me of any love I had for electronics. And as I was thinking, what am I gonna do with my life? Uh, one of my dear friends that I'd met through the Navy uh, was getting out ahead of me and he was uh, excited about going into the field of sales, outside sales, and it was gonna be commercial lighting. And I remember just thinking, well, that's one thing I know I don't wanna do, uh, sales. Also, if I was going to do that, certainly there'd be something more exciting than lighting. But as we kept in touch, he moved into a brand new house six months after he was out of the Navy. And he was making more than an electrical engineer typically made. I, I just thought, wow. And, and at that point right there, I remember something that uh, later I learned in, in Nikian. If you remember the life cycle plan uh, that was uh, for many years, it had something that said, if he can, so can I. That's, that's a powerful thought because that was basically one of the big things that, that happened to me was here was a guy that moved into a new house in six months, making more than an engineer, and it was going to take me several more years of schooling to get to that point to get started. There he already was. And he was talking about how much fun it was. And I, I just thought, wow, uh, if he can do it, so can I. And so I think... Um, Think and Grow Rich, it talks about that the starting point of all achievement is desire. Well, I had that, but also I believe a starting point could be belief. Uh, well, if I saw him do it, and I knew him, uh, I loved him, but I knew him. And I thought, you know, he's a good guy, but he isn't that hot. If he can do it, so can I. So that was a real fundamental foundational thing uh, to my success in lighting was, was desire and belief. Now, the next step was to uh, interview with uh, that company, which was easy to do because he put in a good word for me. They actually turned me down the first time. And, and then I learned another key principle, and that's persistence and determination. Now, one of the things that helped me was, was my pride. I, I couldn't uh, have him call me and say, how did you do? And, and me say, well, I flunked the interview. And so I actually had to go back and, and sell myself. And so that's another principle is uh, try and try again and do it again until you succeed, uh, a, a critical factor. And another aspect that I learned from lighting was, was this idea of going to, to commercial lighting school and learning all about it. But, but the big takeaway I got that, that changed everything was the president of that company. He came uh, after kind of the schooling and everything and introduced himself and told his story of how when he was still a teenager, he was out uh, calling on businesses and, uh, and, and eventually started his own company and, and became a multimillionaire. Well, looking at this guy that, that knew everything was successful, and then he told us, he says, now part of working for me uh, is, is the commitment to call me every day. This is part of the job description. Call me every day. Also, it's all about work. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to contacting the people and doing that day after day after day. And so I want to see a log, uh, write down all of your contacts that you made and send that in to me every week and let, let's go over that together. And I, I just got thinking, wow, okay, well, you know, uh, I made the commitment and I called that guy every day. In fact, multiple times a day typically. And I called him for years. And I, I don't think it was a, a coincidence that I became one of the top salesmen. Also, I don't think it was a coincidence 
that of the eight people that started with me, I was the only one that stayed on. Within just a, a couple of months, all of the others had washed out. Uh, talking with Jerry, none of those people called him. They didn't get plugged in. Fascinating. And, and you know, if you look at the Nikan business and, and why I succeeded in Nikan, one of the big reasons was I, early on, in fact, uh, uh, the, my first contact with Nikan was not my sponsor. He wasn't around, but uh, he told me about his sponsor. And so I actually called him. We wound up being on the phone for over an hour. And then every day thereafter, I called him multiple times. And I did three ways with him. And so much of my success was that. He had the words. He had the mojo, the, the groove. And, and pretty much I took everything from him and made it my own. That, that's one of the most powerful thoughts right there is you can take other people's ideas and make them your own. You can borrow them and then you can pass them on to other people. So that was another takeaway I, I got from that. Now, here's something else I learned. When I first went out there, pretty naive, I got my business cards and I go out and see somebody and say, hi, I'm Dave Johnson. I'm with Northwest Industrial Lamp Company and uh, do you need any lights? Well, people were polite and they says, no, I don't think so. Well, basically I, I failed miserably doing that. Uh, could I say something better? Well, I, I guess I could say something worse. You know, hey, you don't need any light bulbs, do you? Uh, that would be probably as bad as it could go. But, you know, it does matter what you say. I think one of the most important things is in discussing with Jerry Anderson, I, I learned that people do things for their reasons, not for yours. And also, you need to spend some time. I care about them. Uh, if, if you will actually learn what their business is all about, and then think, how can I help this business? Regarding lights, I would look and think, uh, is, is there something I could help as far as the efficiency or save them money uh, on maintenance costs, uh, on, on power? Uh, what about security? Uh, what about safety? What, what about marketability? Could I make their product look better with lights? Uh, what could I do uh, with lights to make their business better and more profitable? And if I could come up with some ideas where I could really help them and then go to them and say, you know, hey, who, who gets to worry about lighting? Uh, meet that person and, and present what I thought could help. Uh, that was a lot better than just saying, hi, I'm Dave Johnson. Do you need any lights? Uh, much more effective. The other thing I learned in, in doing this was this idea uh, that we've heard probably before is, is that people don't buy the first time around, that typically it's follow up, follow up, follow up, that it's probably number five or six uh, before they actually make the purchase. Well, I can confirm that. Uh, it was a, a pleasant surprise if somebody uh, would, would make a, a sale uh, on that first go around. Uh, typically, I was seeing them again and again and again, learning their business, learning them, developing a relationship. And uh, finally, when they needed something, then they would call me. Uh, and that was another thought, is uh, if you've got something that people need, and if they like you, and, and they know you, and they trust you, uh, the, well, there's every chance that uh, you can do business with them. So think about that. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So develop relationships and, and, and follow up, follow up, follow up. When I met my wife at a dance, I, I liked her a lot. Uh, so much so that I walked her to her car and we visited for quite a while. And then I asked her out. And uh, I didn't ask her to marry me that first night. Uh, and, and the same thing with the business. Uh, typically, you won't ask them to marry you when they say yes that first time. Uh, look at it the same way as courtship. Uh, do we like each other? And then have a goal at that first encounter. The big goal is to schedule another encounter, another meeting. You know, the best thing to do with a meeting is to have another meeting and another meeting. And as the relationship builds, and just think in your mind, you know what, Nikan, this is something uh, that people need. I've got something that people need. Uh, and I can change their life with it. Also, it's, it's worthy of my all. Uh, those, those are all thoughts that uh, I, I first learned when I was selling light bulbs. You know, powerful idea. Uh, and, and so, you know, you think about this. What, what if you actually found somebody that was really good at it, learned what they said and did, did the same thing, mentored with them, and so that magic that they had 
uh, started to transfer on you, and then you did it enough to make that activity count because, again, ultimately, once you get good at it, then it all comes down to the numbers, just the mathematics. And so I, I remember, basically, uh, I would call on about 20 people a day, and I averaged about three sales a day. Those were my numbers. And as long as I did that day after day after day, uh, I, I would be successful. I wasn't like this one person. I needed to be invested in the outcome of this one encounter. Basically, I was just invested in the process. And if somebody said no, um, it, it didn't matter that much. Now, think about those numbers, three out of 20. And, and Nikan, those numbers are even better. And we have a much more interesting story to tell. Uh, Nikan is, is an exciting story to tell. Another thing is I learned, uh, uh, you know, going out with, with lighting. I, I remember calling on somebody and they said, you're the third light bulb salesman that's come to me. And I says, oh, surely not the third, maybe, maybe the second, but I, am I the third today? And he reached in his shirt pocket and he, and he gave me two other business cards. Well, you know, I, I went to a different area <laughs> the rest of that day, but uh, I thought, wow. Uh, uh, we were walking on top of each other. Lighting, uh, I couldn't go to somebody and say, you know, I've got a new technology that's going to revolutionize your business. Uh, have you ever heard of electric lighting? Uh, you know, it, it's a very mature business. It's hard to, to get rich on something that is so mature. The thing I love about Nikan is almost everybody you talk to, they've never heard that story before. It's a fascinating story to tell, and you get to be the first one. Huge business advantage in that respect. Uh, another thing is if they have heard of it, it's almost always positive. Maybe it was somebody uh, that uh, showed it to their mom, and, and, uh, and they might even say that, you know, my mom uh, or, or my mom's friend uh, uh, uses that stuff. Uh, she swears by it. It's wonderful. So, so basically, if there is any groundwork laid, it's already real positive. And, and so that, that's really fun. Uh, one of the things I want to share with you also that I think – well, I don't think, I, I know, made the huge difference for me. And uh, uh, bas basically when I first started, you know, I, I think, uh, again, the starting point of all achievement is desire, also belief. Uh, I saw Doug move into a new house. He was making good money. That gave my belief something, you know, to, to, a hope for the reason of, of, of the belief. Uh, and, and, and here's, here's another thing, though, is uh, uh, going out there, I, I was failing miserably right at first. I thought I was doing the right stuff, just wasn't going anywhere. And, and uh, I, I was reading good things. Uh, in fact, I, I remember just devouring, uh, just nourishing uh, uh, my, my mind with uh, the book specifically, The Greatest Salesman in the World. And, and one of the scrolls that I would read again and again was, I will persist. I will succeed. I was not uh, born into this world in defeat uh, uh, and all of this kind of stuff, nor does failure course in my veins. I will not, uh, you know, I, I, I will persist. I will succeed, you know, on and on. I, I just kind of kept doing that, uh, but I wasn't going anywhere. And finally, I just thought, I, I'm doing all I can. What else can I do? And, and I remember just thinking, I, 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 I've got a family here. I'm, I'm in this new area. Uh, and, and so I just started praying. In fact, I, I fasted over a weekend, and, uh, and this was early. Uh, my, my first trainer uh, came into town, and we were going out together Monday morning. And I remember going, uh, calling on business after business, and nothing was happening. And, and in one sense, I remember thinking, wow, see, it isn't so easy after all, is it? Uh, and yet I'm thinking, what am I saying here? I, I need to have this happen, and, you know, oh, please help us. And, and uh, that afternoon, uh, we went in, into a big uh, company and met with uh, the, the purchaser, and uh, he, he made a, about a $1,200 order, which worked out to a, a 300 and something dollar commission for me. Uh, this is back in 1978, so that was, you know, some decent money. Well, the thing that was wonderful is all of a sudden the dam burst. Uh, later that afternoon, I, I made four more sales myself. Uh, all by myself. Uh, and, and, and then I, I remember just the, the wonderful thing of uh, having dinner. They, he took us out to, to the Red Lion, Valerie and I, and, uh, and then the rest of the week, it, it just started clicking. And, and I wound up being one of the top salesmen uh, and, and won a, a pretty neat contest that year. Uh, 
I don't think that was a coincidence. Uh, prayer is the greatest source of strength there is. And in fact, let me, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a book that's pretty cool, Pray and Grow Rich. You know, Think and Grow Rich, you've all heard of that. Her, here's a thought, let me just share this with you. And uh, that, that title there, you think about it. And, and so, uh, so is it all right to pray for riches? Well, let's answer with another question. Is it all right for a farmer to pray and grow crops? Uh, no, he's not asking for a miracle. Humans have grown crops since civilization started. He's asking God to allow a natural, ongoing process to work one more time. Now, a prudent farmer has every right to pray for God to bless his hard work. If he's planting the seeds and pulls the weeds and cultivates and does all of those things, uh, most of the time, uh, uh, you know, there isn't a drought. Uh, there isn't a, a scourge of locusts or, or whatever. Most of the time, it all, it all works out. And so he, he basically just says this, uh, pray and grow rich is like saying uh, pray and grow crops. And, you know, if, if, uh, if you kind of think about this, uh, if, if, if the Lord's interested in this light bulb salesman, uh, and I, I believe he was, that, that's the most powerful thought. That, that, that what if you believed uh, that God was interested in your work? Well, he's interested in everything, so of course he is. And so, so that is the greatest source of strength that there is, is prayer. And, and if you look at this, not as, a, as, as just a, a business strategy for me, but if you really look at this as the idea that uh, Niken, yeah, it is a business, but it's a business about doing good, making a profit by doing good. And if you can kind of think in your mind uh, the reality uh, that there's a lot of people out there that hurt and, uh, uh, and they've maybe even said something like, I, I don't uh, I care how it ends, it's just got to end. I can't go on like that. And they're on their knees praying. And, and if you can kind of think, of, okay, uh, this is a business strategy. I'm going to work hard, but I'm, I'm going to pray and ask to be led to people that are praying that I can serve. And, and just uh, think in, in terms of uh, doing this as uh, we've heard, the, uh, being a go-getter, there's a wonderful book called The Go-Giver. And, and look at this as a way to give and serve, a stewardship, uh, and, and have uh, pray and grow rich, uh, pray and grow crops, uh, and, and you do all of these other things. Have a mentor, a uh, follow-up, uh, uh, treat this as if it really is a business, and uh, not just play with it, uh, but, but do it, persist and succeed. Uh, uh, success is certain, and, and I would just appeal to you that, that you can do it. Why not play big? Another thing, when I was uh, doing the lights, it was fun being in the, in the top 10. Uh, there, there's one of the greatest ways to have a, a, a wonderful life is doing something that you like to do and being really, really good at it. And Nikan, why not choose that to be uh, your, your game? Not to just do good, but uh, uh, really have a, a heck of a business and bring a lot of people along with you. So those are, those are my thoughts, and I think you ought to go for it. Why not you?